It's asparagus season in my part of the world, the time of year where one of my favorite stir-fry ingredients is abundant and cheap. I like to use it in several different stir-fry combinations, which can vary between beef, pork, or chicken as the main protein, and I have even tried a vegan walnut and chickpea version with tremendous results. Today it's a step-by-step -step demo of my chicken version. Start with a couple chicken breasts. These will be chopped into small little morsels. Like so. And it's going to be marinated with these items here. You see from the right, onion powder, just uh, ground black pepper, some seasoned salt, some good quality soy sauce, cooking wine, and just a pinch of baking soda to tenderize the meat. So let's take a closer look at the marinade. Just mix it all up. You'll see the wine will react to the baking soda. And we'll let this sit for about an hour. Make sure everything's pushed down into the fluid. And the chemical reaction's already starting. Now we'll cover it and put it in the fridge. Then get to work chopping vegetables. Start with the harder vegetables. Uh, two stalks of celery, two smallish carrots, and three broccoli stems. They're all going to be peeled and chopped into easy to stir fry portions. And I've got a bag of bell pepper bits, uh, green, yellow, and red. A little bit of onion. And the main ingredient in terms of the vegetable in my asparagus. So I'll get that all prepped up. I'm not going to bore you with the details. I'll just show you the finished work. We've got the bunch of asparagus uh, chopped up into bite-sized morsels. Uh, carrots, uh, broccoli stem, and celery chopped up into segments that um, will all cook in a stir-fry about uh, the same length of time. That's the whole point of chopping them that way. They're easy to stab with a fork as well. And then some bell peppers mixed in with some onion, which all have about the same cooking time. Now let's look at the sauce. Most of what I am using here are common household condiments, save for these three ingredients that I have on hand, especially for making stir-fry sauces. A good quality natural brew soy sauce, a vegetarian mushroom sauce as a substitute for oyster sauce, and an inexpensive honey garlic sauce I picked up at Walmart. The next five ingredients are all very common and are used to taste. I found that level teaspoons of each works well for me. The final three ingredients which I am using are two decidedly different multi-spices that are easily substituted with your favorites and cornstarch for its coagulation value to bind the sauce to the stir-fry. This is the ingredient list with the measurements I use. I will also put it up on the screen before the end of the video. I'm going to do this in my carbon steel wok, but any suitable and large enough skillet will do. The heat setting is the higher end of medium heat, bordering on high heat, and I like to use an external timer when I preheat the cooking oil. In this case, I'm using canola oil. So there is the chicken almost done, ready for separation. That pond scum that appears on the side will be completely separated from the chicken. Uh, you can use the fluids that are involved as um, a rinsing mechanism. Uh, virtually none of that will end up in the final dish. Now there's my timer in the background. These morsels are delicious by themselves right now. We're just going to give them one more toss and then I'll uh, put them off to the side and start with the asparagus. It's almost a shame to use a wok this way. Uh, it happens to be a convenient size for this, so what I'm doing here, I'm going to bring this to a boil. And when it's boiling, I'll put a timer on for three minutes. It'll bring it to about 90% cooked, but still a little crispy. And then I will take it out. Uh, there we go. I'm ready for the ready for the timer right now. I'll separate it, cook the other vegetables, reintroduce this later. So now the asparagus has been separated, the chicken has been separated, and the harder vegetables are in for three to four minutes. And they'll simmer evenly. I'll mix them up quite a bit. So now the soft vegetables have been introduced. If nothing else, it is uh, a nice uh, balance of colors. Now this I'll put on for about three minutes in total. 
Uh, the, you can use the onions as a guide when they start to become translucent. Um, you're pretty well where you want to be. You'll have a little bit of crispiness left uh, in the bell peppers. And then you reintroduce everything, give it two minutes, and then add the sauce. So, my timer worked out quite well. You can see that the onions are just starting to become translucent. There's a chicken reintroduced. I'll toss that for about a minute while I heat up the rice. Then the next to last step, the asparagus is reintroduced. I'll give that about a minute. Then I will drain any excess fluids and introduce the sauce. Now the excess fluids have been drained and everything is now ready for the sauce, which I have mixed thoroughly by simply shaking it up in a small jar. You can see how this mixture thickens as it is heated. We are just about ready to serve this delicious stir fry on a bed of rice, which I will show you in just a few seconds. But before signing off, I'd like to thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing, and as always, we hope to see you next time. And there's the stir fry we just witnessed being made on a bed of rice. And this is exactly why I love asparagus season. See you next time. When the stars won't shine for you, and your dreams turn black and blue. On those dark nights you'll be alright, I'll be right there with you. Together we'll see it through.